Hello all, welcome to another video of Midas short video series. My name is Rohit Joseph and I am a technical support engineer at Midas IB. In today's video, I will be explaining cable force tuning in Midas Civil part 1. The major contents of today's topic will be initial cable forces in Midas Civil using the unknown load factor method. And the second topic will be cable force tuning in Midas Civil, which will be covered in the upcoming video cable force tuning in Midas Civil part 2. The initial cable forces in the cable state bridge is calculated using unknown load factor method in Midas Civil. This function is based on an optimization technique and it calculates the optimum load factors that satisfy specific boundary conditions assigned to the structure. The procedure for calculating the initial stresses for cable state bridge is as follows. Step one, we have to define, we have to model the entire cable state bridge. We are followed by we have to generate the load combinations for dead loads for main girders and pretension loads for the cables. Input dead loads and unit loads, load combinations for dead loads and unit loads. Calculate unknown load factor using unknown load factor function. At the end, we view the analysis results and calculate the initial pre stress. Now let's move into the software. As you can see here, I have already modeled the bridge. For the elements, I have used truss elements for defining the cables. The unknown load factor method is a linear process and because of this reason, we cannot use cable elements for simulating the cables because of its nonlinear behavior. Beam elements is used for simulating the pylon and the girders. It is a symmetric cable state bridge and there are 24 cables. So the cable forces in this cable and the symmetric opposite, the mirror opposite of this cable will be equal. So the number of unknowns, unknown pre, uh, pretension forces that we have to find will be 12. So total there are 24 cable elements. Because of the symmetry, we have to find 12 pre-stressing, pretensioning forces in the cables. But what if it was an unsymmetrical cable state bridge? In that case, we have the unknown, number of unknowns will be 24. So because of the symmetry of the structure, I'll be considering only the right half of this bridge for calculating the unknown load factors. So the next step is defining the static load cases. For that, go to loads, static loads, static load cases. Here I have defined load cases for sulfate. SIDL, the unit loads from T1 to T12 or the 12 cable forces that we have to find and at the end the counterweights and the type is given as user defined. Now I have also defined the loads. So here you can see the self weight is already as applied. Static loads for SIDL and see the SIDL loads here and the pretension loads are also defined. So the unit pretension load T1, so the T1 will be 1 kilonewton in this cable and also in this cable and it comes under load case T1. Likewise we have T2 and T4 till T12. You can see here the counter loads are also applied. So we can also view the retention loads in a tabla format. You can see that kilonewton or one kilonewton tension is applied to all the loads. T1 to T12. And these are the elements that are, that are assigned. Now let's the model is already run. So we can check the results. Let's go to the results. Before that, we have to create a load combination. For, for that, go to results, load combination. In load combination, I have created a load combination named ULC. And in that, I have included all the load cases, sulfate, SIDL, T1 to T12, retention loads, and the counterweight. And the factor of 1 is given. Let's check the results for ULC. Go to forces, beam diagrams, select ULC, legend, and check the results. So 
now we can see that it always it does the cables don't have much effect on the bending moment of the current and the bending moment is very high the cable pretension forces are not that much effective because it is very negligible it's just 1 kilo newton load so now if we select the girders select activate so we can see that the moments are very high and it's almost close to 69000 kilo newton meter which is very high now what i have done is i have created a load group deck and i have selected these elements activate so the elements 1001 to 1005 and 1008 to 1012 let's check the bending moment diagram let's see values all and i'll check the bending moment at the i8 can see that the bending moment in this element is close to 68,000 meter and which is very high. Now I want to find the pretension loads in the cables in such a way that the moment in these elements, in this structure group elements will be between minus 5,000 meter and plus 5,000 meter. Now the moment is in the range of 68,000 meter, which is very high. So for that purpose, we will be using the unknown load factor function. So let's go to the cells, cable control, unknown load factor. I've already created a, a factor group, unknown, but I can create a new one, add new, I'll name it as sample. So I'll select the load combination as USC. Apart from that, now I have to create certain constraints. So for creating the constraints, click on add, and give the constraint name. The first constraint name will be M1001. And the constraint type is bending moment, beam force. The element is 1001. And the point is I end, the component is MY. And we have two options, equality and also inequality. So equality is chosen if we want a particular force, like 4500 kilonewton meter should be obtained at the I end of element ID1001. And we want to find the cable uh, forces satisfying this condition. Or else we have another option of inequality. And here we can set the upper bound and lower bound. So I'll be saying the upper bound will be 5000 kilonewton meter and the lower bound will be minus 5000 kilonewton meter. We can click on OK and, and it will be all defined. So I have already defined the constraints M1001 to M1005 and then M1008 to 1012. So can close this and open the unknown one. Click on modify. You can see the constraints already defined and we can also check the tables. Tables. So we we can provide constraints for reaction, displacement, truss force, and beam force. I have selected beam force and the name is M1001. The element will be 1001 which is already provided here. These will be the elements that I selected, which are in the deck group. And the position is I end. The component is MY. The type is inequality. Upper bound and lower bound, 5000 to minus 5000. This is how the constraints can be set. And we can check on all these constraints while calculating the unknown load factors. Now we have the option for object function type. Let's see what it does. So the equality conditions are solved using linear algebraic equations. If the number of unknown loads and the uh, number of constraints are equal, the equations are equal, the equations can be directly solved using linear algebraic equation system. But if the equations are need to satisfy the inequality conditions, there will be numerous solutions for these conditions to satisfy, as you can see here. For finding the load, the cable forces, we can use any one of these three options. One is the linear one, one is the square, and also the another one is absolute max. So from the figure, it's clear like 
by using which option we will get this by using any one of these options we can fix the initial cable forces in our case we are using the inequality condition so we, ha we have to use, select the object type function i am choosing square this time the sign of unknowns we need all the cables to be in tension or positive if we select negative that means the the inequality conditions will be try to be get solved keeping the forces in the cables as compression if i select both then positive and negative will be considered in our case i am selecting positive now in the unknown load cases there are self fade then all the cases you can see t1 to t12 and the counterweight i am checking by checking on these options t1 to t12 it will be considered as the unknowns we also have the simultaneous equation method if we check this option on this is only applicable for uh, only if the constraints are equality conditions so if the constraints are equality condition and the number of unknowns are equal to number of constraints then the solution will be solved using simultaneous equation method since we are using inequality constraints we cannot use this option click here to get the unknown load vectors now this will be the tension initial cable forces in the cables and the corresponding forces in m1003 m1001 you can see the values this is the upper bound and the lower bound and you can see all the uh, bending moment in the elements are within 5000 and minus 5000 by clicking on the influence matrix we also get the influence of uh, using the influence matrix method we can see the influence of each cable force in the bending moment uh, bending moment of each element by clicking on generate excel file we get the table in excel format now we can click here to make the load combination so by clicking here i give the name ui that and clicking on ok a load combination will be created click on ok and ok now we have the option ulf activate everything we'll check the models in ulf you can see the bending moment the girders are reduced you can check the bending moment the i end of all these elements the moment m y is less than 5000 and greater than minus 5000 see this i hope this is clear you can also take the low combination to lf and this will be the unknown load factors this is how the initial pretension forces in a cable state bridges can be calculated.